In this video, I tried to recreate Undertale's battle system completely from scratch. For this project, I'll be using the Bevy game engine and the programming language Rust. To summarize, I'm basically going to be making an Undertale fan game engine for the Bevy game engine. I'll be linking the source code for this project in the description, which if I'm going to be honest is a little bit messy and incomplete, but if this video gets enough traction, I might consider working on the project further and maybe releasing the project with full functionality and cleaner code. Without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. To start off, let's create the box that our player will move around in. I didn't know this until now, but this box is called the bullet board. I went into the actual Undertale game and recorded the soul moving from the right of the board to the left of the board in the initial flowey fight. Then I found out that it took 1.2 seconds to move the full width of the board. Using some simple math, I figured out that the soul moves at a speed of 129 pixels per second. Then, because Undertale runs on 30 frames per second, I figured out that each frame or physics update in my case, the soul should move 4.3 pixels. So after writing some simple player movement code with that speed in mind, we now have a simple bullet board accurate to the original Undertale game. You might also be wondering how I got my game to run at 30 FPS, and the simple answer is that it doesn't. I'm merely updating the player position on a 30Hz time step. So the game is still running at an uncapped frame rate, I'm just updating the logic of the game on a different time step so that it appears to be running at 30 frames per second. Next, let's add some buttons to the game. Undertale has 4 buttons at the bottom of the screen, one for attacking, one for acting, one for using items, and another for mercy sparing the enemies in the game. To get the sprites for these buttons, I actually just took a screenshot of the game and copied out the buttons. Yeah, really high level techniques. Anyway, I decided to not use Bevy's built-in UI system and just use sprites for these buttons because I feel like this is a lot more flexible approach, especially given that Undertale does a lot of weird things with its UI in the actual game, and I wanted to give myself that same flexibility in the future. Anyways, after I got those button sprites created, I created the main selection menu where you could select the four different actions and whichever button you're hovering on would teleport the soul onto it. True to the style of Undertale, I also made it so that the soul is not just a UI icon. When the soul appears in the menu, we are moving around the actual player which we control while dodging attacks. I also found it really weird that Toby Fox didn't space these button icons out evenly. He had the perfect opportunity to space each button by 45 pixels so that they would line up perfectly with the text box. But I guess Toby wanted some sort of variation because when you check the spacing of these buttons, the first button is 43 pixels from the second one, the second button is 50 pixels from the third one, and the third button is 45 pixels from the fourth button. I still decided to go along with the spacing in the original game because I wanted to be faithful to Toby's creation. Now it's time to add player statistics into the game, so basically the name of the player, the current health of the player, and the level of the player. This is actually pretty simple because the only thing that actually needs to be interactable is the health of the player, and that is just a simple health bar. Undertale actually uses multiple different fonts for these statistics. I found this pretty helpful article online which explained which fonts Undertale used, and after downloading these fonts into my project, I did some simple user interface programming and now we can see the name of our player, the level of our player, and the current health of our player displayed both through text and through health bar. Now we need to work on getting these buttons to actually do something when we press on them. For that, we're going to need to get our bullet board, which also doubles as a text box to actually display text. Displaying text was pretty simple, but let me explain my approach for creating a navigatable menu. It all revolves around these two data structures, the decision and decision menu structures. A decision menu contains a left and right column of decisions, and decisions are basically actions that we can take such as talking or checking in the dummy encounter. A decision has a display name, a system which will run after it is clicked, and an optional sub-menu, which can contain a decision menu. Using this recursive design, we can customize our menu to consist of pretty much infinite selections. Now let's use this menu system to implement the Undertale attacking system. Let's take a look at how the attack system looks in the real game. The visual premise is very simple. Just make a bar move to the right or left at a constant speed, and stop the bar when we press the Z button. So I made the decision in our fight menu trigger the fighting animation, which is currently completely visual. 
If we run our code, you'll notice that we can trigger a basic fighting animation to appear through our menu system, even though it currently doesn't do anything and it's still missing some style points such as the flashing animation when we press D. Now it's time to actually add an enemy to the game because we can't attack nothing. I decided it would be funny if I just made the enemy my profile picture on YouTube, so I got started creating a 1-bit sprite for my YouTube profile picture. What's funny is that I didn't realize that the Undertale battle sprites are actually scaled up by 2 times, so when I made this sprite, I ended up having to have the resolution and redo the pixel art later on. After making the sprite, I also made it so that you transitioned into the dodging phase after you had your turn with your attack. There currently is no attack though, so you can just move around in the box for a few seconds until you get kicked back into the menu. So let's get started on making some attacks. The system for attacks is pretty simple. First, a system runs to spawn initial attacks or initialize some resources. Meanwhile, an update system runs every frame for when an attack is active, and that system updates the spawning or positions of whatever is on screen. I'll probably make these systems more streamlined and accessible if I decide to expand on this project in the future, but for now what's most important is for myself to understand what is going on. With that in mind, I created a very simple first attack where the player must move between the gaps of some projectiles in order to dodge them. Then I made a second attack which shifts around a bunch of shovels in a sine wave which I thought was pretty interesting and also a lot more difficult to dodge. I then made it so that you could actually attack the enemy and also polished up the attacking system so that the fight bar would flash, the enemy would shake when getting hit, and the health bar with the damage text above the enemy would appear when getting hit. These were all super easy to add in once I had gotten the base system finished because I had experience making all of these types of effects before. After that, I made a death animation for the enemy which basically takes all the non-transparent pixels in the enemy sprite and makes them a particle. Each row of particles is then added to a 2D vector and each row of particles is then given a random velocity over time to achieve an accurate kill effect. I made a reset menu and after this we've successfully created a very rough Undertale fan game engine with the Bevy game engine. Subscribe, comment, and like if you enjoyed this video and would like to see the engine developed more and possibly developed up to the point where other people besides myself can understand how to use it.